Hello everybody, um, my name is Rosie and I run a business called Painting Passions. Um, so normally it would be face-to-face -face classes um, which take the form of um, booze and brushes, um, coffee and canvas um, or kids and canvas. Um, so obviously since the lockdown I've had to kind of adapt um, my classes to take a more virtual kind of um, form. Um, and I normally have been doing this um, in a live session which you can join. Um, or you can watch the recording and, and do your class yourself at home in your own time. Um, so, so far they've gone quite well. Um, and it's something I think I will carry on doing just to kind of reach out to all the people that don't live locally to me. Um, so, but I do, I am looking forward to getting back to my face-to-face -face classes as well. Um, so what happens in these classes is, um, so this little hair here is one I've done in the past. Um, I've done it about, five or six times I think this one um, but basically how it works is I talk you through it step by step um, throughout the class um, and when it's broken down to you like that it's kind of a bit more easy to get your head round and um, you don't need any sort of experience for the classes um, most people are complete beginners um, and they're all kind of really surprised at what they're actually capable of when they come out of the class and they can't believe they've actually managed to paint something that looks like what it's supposed to um, and that is because it is you are guided through it um, every single sort of step of the way. Um, so normally I provide um, the supplies in my classes, but as it's virtual, um, you will need um, to have your three primary colours, um, red, blue and yellow, and also black and white. Um, but in this class I'm also using brown. So you can mix brown um, and it's purple as well. So the purple you can mix also, um, but it just won't be probably as bright as this. Um, but I will kind of talk you through it as we go along. But I will be using a brown and a bright purple along, alongside those colours as well. Um, so brush wise, um, I will be using what I would normally use in my class, which is um, a large, medium and small. Um, just something similar, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as what I've got here. Um, but something, you can see these are well used. <laughs> you can see the large one, that's more for like coverage for the background. Uh, the medium and the small is really what we use the most of. Um, you also need a pencil in today's class, um, a cup of water to put your brushes in. Um, and so as it is acrylic paint that I'm using anyway, um, it, it's, it does dry sort of hard on your brushes. So you wanna make sure you keep them nice and moist um, and just don't let the paint dry on them. Um, I'm using a palette. So these tear off palettes, if you've never used them before, um, they're fantastic and they just save any sort of washing up or mess. Um, just like a paper pad but they have like a clear sort of film on the top um, which allows the water to not kind of make the, the paper go soggy as such. Um, I used to get this from the works for like two pounds each um, but I think they've stopped doing them I can't seem to get hold of them as much but um, but yeah these run about sort of four, four or five pounds I think um, but they do last forever so they're definitely worth, worth getting if um, you are going to sort of carry on doing your own sort of painting at home. Um, so I have got lots of these, well I say lots, the ones I've done so far live I've got recorded on my website as well so but I'll give you more details about that later on. Um, do I think I'm going anything else? I think that's everything. So obviously you're going to need a canvas, <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, so it doesn't matter if you haven't got an easel, you don't have to have an easel, you can lay it flat down um, but you will need something to paint on. It doesn't have to be a canvas as such, it can be um, some thick paper, watercolour paper, but if you are using that sort of thing I would tape it down because it will curl up otherwise with a bit of water on there. Um, but yeah, pretty much whatever you've got at home you can kind of make it work um, for this class. So <clears throat> first of all you need your pencil and um, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch out the, the shape of the hair on there first um, and then we're going to paint the background and then we're going to start working on the, the body of the hair, the face, um, the ears, and then last thing will be the kind of greenery and the sort of flowers at the front there. Um, so, pencil. So obviously the hair is the main thing on here. I've, I've got quite a bit of a taller canvas on this one here. So the, the ears are, the hair is slightly longer as such. So it's more kind of, this is more of a standard canvas that I use in my classes, 16 by 20, 40 by 50. Um, it's kind of good for most, most things. So it isn't as long as this one. So it's kind of a bit more squished into this, into this size if you've wondered why it kind of might look slightly different. Um, so you just want to make, make enough room for your ears because you're going to draw the face first and then the ears will kind of fit in. Um, so 
you're going to start there but obviously imagine that you're going to have to have your ears above so make sure you leave enough room so we're going to start from the nose which is going to be very central to the canvas so as long as you go central with that then i think you, you know it should be fine with enough room for your for your ears um so what we're going to do first is we're going to do like a low v sort of shape so it's just two lines which is going to make this sort of no shape here and we're going to kind of work from that so i'm going to go a bit heavy on the pencil so you can see okay so sort of like a low v sort of shape okay and then we're going to draw a line down a little line down and then we're going to get these kind of cheeks chops <laughs> i don't know what you'd call them really um that's going to come out of the the nose and kind of go up so the are it's quite the hair's got quite a long face um so the eyes kind of go about sort of here so these two sort of curves that we're going to come around with um are going to be sort of up here so i'm going to go round so you get this kind of round shaped bottom there and then you're going to come in slightly and then up Okay, so that's where our eye is going to be. So that's depending on what, what you know size canvas you're doing it on, but that's about that much of my pencil. Um, but like I say, if you're doing this in your own time, you can pencil it out. Uh, you can uh, rub it out um, and just you know try keep sort of going until you kind of like it. Because all of this is going to be painted over, so you don't need to kind of worry about pencil lines or anything. Um, and obviously. As I'm going along, pause me because normally I'm doing it as a live class and, the, and that's recorded. Um, obviously, I'm going at a class speed, whereas as I'm doing this on my own in my bedroom, then <laughs> you're going to probably need to pause me if I'm kind of not giving you enough time. So, obviously, feel free to pause me as I'm in needed. So, I'm going to come round the other side here, exactly the same move. I'm going to come up and round and then in. So like I say, it's quite a long, skinny sort of face. As we go along there, okay. So these, it's quite straight, these bits coming up here. They're not, kind of coming too much. So they're quite sort of skinny and come in. So um, then we curve it over at the top here. And that's where our eyes are gonna kind of sit in there, okay. So you don't wanna make your eyes too slanted because I found with this one, if you make your eyes go up, um, and too sort of slanted. It does make the, the hair look a little bit evil, which we don't really want. <laughs> um, so we're going to try and make it not look so slanted, okay? So we're going to level out this bottom of the eye there. So kind of a bit, a bit of an angle on it, but kind of quite level. And then we're going to curve this here. Okay, so you want this line at the top here to come quite level, and then you won't get that sort of slanted kind of look so you try and make them a bit level mine's slightly high one side it's always quite difficult to make things um completely even once we get this first bit penciled in then a lot of it is just coloring a lot of it in then um so this is probably the most difficult bit i would say um there's just quite a few steps on this one some of them are a lot easier so there's not so many steps, but, but the steps are quite effective. And then some I, I do, do have a few more steps. So just take a little bit more concentration. Um, okay, so we've got the eyes, the nose. Okay, so the nose has got this sort of bridge that's gonna come up the middle there. So we're gonna, again, come quite, quite straight up, but then we're gonna curve around. Okay. And that's kind of the bridge of the nose, like that. So use a bit of a gap and it just goes right above the eye like that. Okay, and then we're gonna do the top of the head there. So the, the above the ears, it's gonna come out slightly and then you're gonna come over and down. So you just don't want too big a top of the head. You don't want a massive forehead on it if possible. Um, so quite a low sort of um, curve over the top of the head there. Um, and then we're gonna do the cheeks. So the cheeks come off of the eyes and they're gonna come sort of down and into the bottom of that other bit here. 
okay so then you start to see the sort of where we're kind of going with it and again the other side like that so obviously i can see it's not completely even but it's working from the side is quite difficult obviously you can then play about with it as much as you want um and then the mouth at the bottom so it's just going to be a little curve that little mouth is going to be the bottom one so that's kind of the main that's the the face so now we're going to probably don't get the body in next so the body is going to, just going to be two sort of curves it's going to come off of the the canvas either side of the head so we're just going to do a sort of curve just like it's kind of sitting up kind of thing so we're going to go down like that okay so that's the body the head and then the ears they're going to be quite big sort of flappy ears um so they're going to go right either side of the top of the head there and they're going to be a bit bit wavy not not just too completely even i am going to be doing anyway so Bit of a wave on it and then down again into the corner there. And then same the other side, right into the corner. Like that. So we've got these two, two ears. And obviously you can chop and change to they look not 100% even, but <laughs> you can still change that as you go along. Okay, and then we're going to just draw two two little bits in the middle so they're going to be the insides of the ears there's so that pink bit so i'm just going to go up in and down like that oh and that's pretty much all the drawing that we're going to need to do so <coughs> we're going to do the background color next so I did yellow on all the classes I did it, but a lot of people did blue, which was quite nice. So obviously, obviously there's no sky that's gonna be yellow, uh, but it's just kind of the picture that I worked from had, had yellow background. Um, but a light blue background does look really nice as well. So that's something that you could do. So I'm gonna pick my big brush. So whatever biggest brush that you've got, just for to kind of cover the, it's good for coverage. Um, and we're gonna mix a really pale yellow. So really quite pale because yellow can be quite harsh otherwise. And then you can see we've got this bit of texture in the background here. So it's kind of a bit of white flicks through there and a bit of more yellow flicks through it. So we're gonna do that while it's wet. So if you just dip your brush into your water pot and then just dab it onto kitchen towels and paper towel. Um, and then we're gonna mix a light yellow. So you wanna mix enough of this to do the whole background around it. Like I say, nice and pale because yellow is quite harsh otherwise. And then we'll run some flicks through it. Um, So aiming for a sort of this sort of really pale yellow sort of colour. And then what we're going to do while it's wet, we're going to run some sort of flicks of white and sort of yellow through it as we're going along. So we just start getting that on now. Go pop this down so I don't this doesn't fly off. So you're going to paint the whole thing with this. Right around your ears. But you want this to be slightly wet, so you might want to work quite quickly. Get plenty on there. And then what we're going to do is also go around the sides as well. So we're going to go to top sides, underneath, um, just to make it look quite finished. So this is the base yellow that we're doing here. Oh, so that's one thing you want to be careful of is paint flying everywhere because it will not come out of your carpet. So 
pick where you're doing it wisely. All the way around. Just going to paint the sides. Top. Sides, top, uh, and then the underneath as well. So we are going to have some brown on this, but if we just paint it all white, uh, sorry, all yellow for now. <clears throat> and then while that's kind of a little bit tacky still we're going to dip into without washing our brush we're going to dip into some white and we're going to do like a sort of crisscross sort of motion just to give a bit of texture so we're going to go sort of one way we don't get too too much white on there so two lines one way two lines the other way so you get a bit of a sort of crisscross and where it's slightly wet depending on how quick you've done it um you get to this sort of texture so i'm going like a crisscross like a sort of hashtag type thing so i'm going to go two lines one way and two lines the other way and you get this sort of texture you can dip back into your um yellow because obviously you've got it there so if you've too much white you can take it back with some more yellow no worries it's just to just to make the the, the, the the background look a bit more interesting rather than just flat colour. But this is where, if you wanted to do blue, you just do a really, really pale blue um, and then you do the same as what we're doing with the white. And just get this kind of crisscrossy motion in there. Like I say, it's just to make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm going to do some with the white and then I'm going to dip in with a very small amount of yellow, very, very small amount of straight yellow because it will be very bright on there. And it will slightly mix into the, you see you don't, don't need much at all. And again, you can kind of take it back with the color you've got already, but very, very sparing. So that's say two lines one way, one way the other. So it's lines that way, lines that way. So crisscrosses. Not so just gives it a bit more of an interesting background but yeah be very very spare with the yellow because it is very very bright on there we want it to be a bit more subtle not too kind of garish so it just gives it a bit of an interesting background and um, but if you were doing a blue this is where you just use maybe just a little bit of straight blue but again you know be quite sparing with it it's quite bright don't need much So I'm probably happy with that. So I'm just trying to get the light in a bit better. There we go. So now we're going to start with our brown. So the brown of the hair of the body, sort of in the nose there and in the ears. It's going to be the same sort of technique really. Bit, bit thin down, um, so you can so it's kind of you can see where it's a bit looks quite textured. So that's because it's a bit thinner, uh, and you can see the brush strokes a bit more. So I'm going to move on to my medium brush. I've got a medium flat brush here. Um, these are day around graduate brushes. This is what I use in my class, um, and 
because I think brushes, quality brushes make such a difference to paint with than, than sort of rubbish ones. Um, but they do tend to need replacing, well mine do because I'm using for glasses, they need replacing, you know, three times a year probably. But um, yeah, they get well used. So I'm going to use a brown here. So you can mix a brown with the three primary colours. So if you mix a purple, I'll just show you over here, just so you know. It's not going to be exactly the same as this brown, but it will be a brown. So blue there, a bit of red. So you get a sort of purple and then a bit of um, yellow in there. So you get a sort of brownie colour and then you can just add more of each colour if you need to. More red in it will be like a ready sort of brown. So it's just kind of messed about with what sort of colour brown you want. But yeah, it is possible. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use the, the bought brown. I'm probably going to mix a little bit of white in with it, just a little bit. Um, before I water it down. And I say white is very, very strong and so is black. So when you're using either to kind of lighten or darken, um, I would be very, very sparing with it. You can always add more. It's always a bit more difficult to take it back. Um, and the amount of times over the years I've ended up with masses of piles of paint because I'm trying to get, get it back to that colour. And sometimes it's just almost impossible to get it back. So just into a corner of that. I'm going to add a little bit of white just to lighten it slightly just a little bit of white and then what I'm going to do is slightly water it down so slightly water down I'm going to try and show you without it dribbling down my hand but you're kind of really kind of making it you can see when it's um, quite watery on this palette because it kind of separates a bit where it's a bit kind of got a plasticky film on it. So water that down and then what we do is start getting this in here. So we're going to kind of do the same sort of motion that the hair is in there. So we're going to kind of go up and down. And then you're going to have a bit of a Bit of, rather than like a line, you know, smooth line, you're going to have a bit of a textured line so it looks a bit like hair. We're going to just I'm going to get myself a better brush, that's a bit rubbish, that one. And where it's kind of translucent, you can kind of see through it a little bit, which is what we want. So we can keep going with this. Obviously water down more if you need to. I'm just painting it in the, the texture that we want. You can kind of see in there, it's a bit kind of, you know, it's a bit textured rather than smooth.
and then we're going to go a bit thicker <coughs> excuse me with it underneath the chin so it looks like a bit of a shadow so a bit thicker and make it a bit darker so it's kind of sort of same technique so you can kind of go up and down with this kind of thin brush flat brush kind of up and down like that and then kind of just bringing it fading it out a little bit just so it looks a bit heavier around, around the neck and then we're going to do a few bits of the darker just so that you can see sort of two different sorts of hair on there I'm probably just going to go underneath a little bit and um, just get that bit of brown there. You can just leave it yellow if you want. Doesn't matter either way. We can kind of fold it around the canvas this way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so we're going to do that same technique now, but we're going to do it up here on the nose and then around the ears as well. So exactly the same, watered down to start with that same brown. Um, and then we'll do a bit sort of darker bits in there. lighter brown in and then we'll come back and do the dark so around the ears but yeah like a nice watery consistency and again sort of you don't you know you don't want the lines to be completely even really <clears throat> nice and loose I think sort of loose lines and it just makes it a bit more expressive in my, in my eyes anyway. Everyone thinks differently, you know, everyone's got their own opinion when it comes to art and painting. But anything's possible really. So rules. This on this side. Okay, so we've got the lighter bits in and then we'll get a bit of our darker brown again. So thicker brown, I say darker, thicker. And then it'll come out darker. So we'll do a bit more in the same sort of technique, making it look a bit hairier. And we're gonna go a bit darker down the edges. This one. Dark around here. Drop a tad higher, I think there's the head, the head there. Yeah, so you've got a bit of texture going on in there. Um. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this little bit in here, I think. Yeah, I think we, I think we do that the other colour actually. Okay, so that's all we kind of do with that brown for now. Um, and now we're gonna mix 
a bit more white into that brown that we've just been using um, to do these kind of real creamy bits in here. So it's just a lighter version of that brown. So it's like a, goes like a sort of tan color. Okay, so um, that brown you've got, if you wanna mix some more white into it. So you get a light sort of tan color. It's quite a creamy sort of color there. Do you want that sort of contrast really between the two? So I think about that colour works, I think. Yeah, that looks the same colour as what I've done there. So this is where you might want to switch to like a smaller brush, depending on um, how big your canvas is. So we're just going to paint in here. So if there's not much contrast, I'd probably make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So yeah, still think there could be more contrast there. So I think I'm going to add some more white. I'm going to get a bit on the bridge of the nose. So this one does have a bigger bridge of the nose, so you can make it a bit thicker a bit later on. It's a bit wider, the nose, I think, on that one. It's near enough impossible to make the painting exactly the same. <laughs> That's what I found doing these classes. <clears throat> it's always quite difficult because I'm working from the side here rather than in front of it. So it always looks good from this angle, but I think sometimes from the front, it doesn't look, you know, it's difficult doing it this way. So you are going to paint the same colour on these cheeks here. Obviously, if you keep some sort of line so you know where you're going. Um, but we're going to mix a bit of um, brown into it to get that kind of that kind of shadowy bit there. So get these in first. Eye. Like so, you're going to get some more down here. And then you're going to use, sorry if you can hear that creaking in the background, there's, not, there's a gate that keeps creaking in the garden. It's quite windy today. That's it. So once you've done that, it's all the same colour. And then you're going to dip into, you can just wipe your brush off really. You don't need to kind of wash it. You're going to dip back into just a bit of brown. Just that unmixed brown is fine, but just be quite sparing with it really. And you, while it's wet, you're going to kind of pull down here. So bit of water probably in that brown might help it go a little bit better but you're just going to kind of pull it out a little bit as you pull it out it's where it's wet if you do it kind of quick enough it will um kind of blend in a little bit so you're kind of pulling this hair out and this separates the two kind of areas Again, adding these kind of little lines and doing that kind of texture and kind of pulling it out into the like that. 
Yeah, a bit of water and just help it flow a little bit on there. Um, but you just want it to kind of blend out a little bit, really, and so you get that sort of shadow. It separates the hair a little bit. It's something like that, really. So on the other side, you get that sort of line in first, and you kind of pull it out. So where the side's a bit drier, you can get your brown in and then you can dip back into that creamy sort of colour and work it back into it. So it's not so harsh because it's not wet to mix into, you're gonna, it's gonna look a bit harsh. So you do it kind of the other way, get some cream and work it back. And you do the same under here. Let's go paint that line in there as well. Again, that will probably be dry, so you can get the brown on and then just pull it back for a bit of that cream. That kind of blends in a little bit more. And then that kind of separates the, the different areas there. So this is where I'd probably make, if you're going to make the um, brown a little bit wider, I'll probably do that now. So a little bit wider like this one, I think. I say it's quite difficult to always make it the same. Um, and then probably go a little bit wider. So you can forever change things as you're going along. You're not kind of tied um, with what you're doing. You can change, chop and change as you go along. And you can paint over stuff obviously as well, but um, always, always wait till it's dry because if you don't, you end up with a big muddy mess. Um, and that's not what you want. Okay, a bit, of a, a bit more of a wider nose now, like this one. Okay. So now I think we're going to paint in the ears while we wait in. Do that just a second. So change it. I think that. Um, so I'll go back to some sort of medium brush, um, and then you're going to mix like a pink. Like a sort of light pink colour. So you want white with a little bit of red. So quite quite light pink, but then we do darken it slightly to make it give it a bit more depth. So I'd say like quite a light pink, like baby pink sort of colour, that sort of colour. You can get the inside of your ears. 
né? Pink in the ears. So what we're going to do is just to darken it, just give it a bit more depth. We're just going to add just a bit, of, bit of straight red on our brush. So just a lot of this is why it has to be wet. So sometimes you have to work a bit quickly so it doesn't dry. So a bit of red just on that top side, and then you're going to blend it in. So very very sparingly with the red. Then you're going to fade it into the ear. So it gets. It's slightly darker at the top, so it gives gives it a bit more, like I say, a bit more depth into the ear. So if, if things have dried, you can just use like a damp brush, like just like a clean damp brush, and that can cut sometimes help it blend as well. Top tip for you. When you add sort of one, two, three shades of a colour, that's when you start to get a bit of depth. Um, it's amazing, really, <clears throat> the effect that that can have when you do, when you, you know, like with the grass, we're going to use a couple of greens. <clears throat> and it just, just makes it kind of stand out a little bit off the, off the canvas. Um, so that's the ears. So I think I'm going to start doing the, putting the black of the eyes in. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> nice small brush, get some black paint. So you can use any sort of acrylic paint, but cheap acrylic paint, like cheap cheap, is not very nice to paint with because it's very thin. Um, but even just your budget, like Reeves, um, like student quality, it's kind of what you want really. Um, not essential, but you will notice the difference in the paint because where this is quite thick, you'll find that it's quite runny, cheap, cheap acrylic, um, and very, very thin. So small brush, and then we're gonna go in with some black paint now to the eyes. Because you wanna hold your brush really quite close to it, like a pencil. Um, and a bit of water in it, just a little bit of water in, just some of it. Never try and water down a whole pile of paint, just a corner of it. And then um, you get cleaner edges. Again, this is where this top bit here, you don't want it too slanted, so you can kind of bring it in a bit more level. This is the kind of the higher angle of this bit up here makes it more slanted. So you can kind of level it off top and bottom. So it's kind of level there. You can kind of level it off a bit more that way as well. And that will help make it not so slanted. I think the eyes are probably the trickiest bit really. One slightly bigger than the other. More even? Yeah. Okay, so black in the eyes. And then we're going to do like a black bit here. The bottom of the nose. Just kind of a bit thicker, get your sort of line in either side, and then come down a bit higher in the middle. 
so it's slightly thicker than that middle bit there. You can see. Bring it a little bit closer for you. See, I've got a bit thicker there. It's a bit uneven. <laughs> That's it. I'll thicken that brown up to it in a second. Um, so the nose, and we're going to put a line down this bit here. So again, you don't want too much paint on your brush, a bit runnier. So see how you can see my brush, if I can get a good shot of it. So you can see the brush through the paint. If you've got too much paint clogged up in your brush, that's how your lines are going to be. It's keeping your brush nice um, and the paint slightly wetter when you're doing the more detailed stuff. Um, because when it's slightly wet, it doesn't all cling to your brush as much either. But really look at your, if, if your lines are coming out really thick and you're not, you're not having much control over it, look at your brush and also your pressure. So pressure is one of the most important things really. It's how hard you press your brush, is how hard your line's gonna be. And sometimes you barely don't need to touch the surface um, of a painting and you've got a lot more control that way. So once you get that, it kind of, something kind of clicks, I think. Um, and it makes a world of difference. I've got stray hair on my brush. Okay. So line down the middle, and then you're gonna do two lines either side. So that's slightly watered down. So the smallest brush you've got is probably best for this. And then we're gonna come to the bottom here, here. Like that. So you start, doesn't make it all the way around, so just kind of round here. We'll let the black dry. Um, and then what we'll do is, if you can see on this one, we've got some, I want to probably use like a dark brown. So this almost like, it's not an outline because it's kind of broken, but it's a bit like it defines the edges a little bit, but we'll use like a dark brown for that. So see how we've got kind of this lines edged around here. It's kind of broken, it's a bit loose. It's not a perfect, completely unbroken outline. You don't want that. If it's um, a bit more of a broken line, then it um, looks more expressive, I think. So I'm gonna darken some brown with a little bit of black. So, a bit of black in it, just so it's like a darker brown. It's not so harsh then, it's like black. A bit of a darker brown, so you probably can't see that well here, but it's not black, it's like a dark brown. So then you're going to add some water into that. This is where you want to be quite watery, um, and really, where it's watery, it doesn't cling to my brush at all. And you want to want this kind of loose line. So I'm start kind of in here, so a bit even more watery than that as well. So that, and then I'm just going to go kind of. See how I'm kind of, it's a bit kind of broken. It's not completely, um, right, you know, a complete even outline. Again up here, so you imagine like the, the edges are kind of, a bit kind of fluffy. Um, this is where you kind of get the, the outline to kind of do that. So a bit up and down, but again, kind of broken still. And then we're gonna do this throughout the whole we do this around the whole hair and it kind of outlines it but in a in a more of a subtle way so do it around both ears
bit down here. So just kind of two lines really down here. Kind of make it stand out a bit better. And just kind of add water as and when you need to in your, in your kind of dark brown mix there. And same with side. It's kind of sharpening everything up. And then around this side as well, around the nose, do a bit more sharpening up there. And then with this, with this dark brown, we're going to do some sort of eye, little eyebrows in there. Some sort of hairy eyebrows <laughs> that this hair's kind of got. Around here. Just kind of on these two bits. The same sort of up and down, a bit like a scribble really. Quite lightly. Got some sort of hair at the top there. And then we're also doing a few kind of bits. So you do the kind of outline still here as well. Kind of just around the edges. I'll bring it a bit closer in a second so you can see. And then we're going to kind of do some a few lines here and there. Make it look a bit sort of hairy bits. It just adds to the sort of hairiness there. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more because it looks quite light in the ears there. So I'm going to add a bit more this brown in there. That sort of unmixed brown I think will be good. It's kind of added a bit of this hairy sort of texture in there again. So I think it's a little bit light. Make it a bit more darker. That's it, yeah. I went a bit too light, I think, on the ears. So just slightly watered down brown. That's the beauty because you're doing it at home. Um, you can um, come back to it another day because sometimes you look at it, look at it for so long, then the next day you come back and you know you can see the things that you want to fix on it or change on it. Whereas I suppose in my classes you're kind of limited to the two hours really. a bit yeah that's more like it we might add a bit more down here as well so just more of that sort of straight straight brown
water. I think because you're doing it at home, I think it's no moment to stop with the painting as well. Because <laughs> it's easy just to keep fiddling and fiddling with something. Um, I'm happy with that. So the eyes. Um, so I've got green on here. So probably a lot of hairs have got like an orangey sort of brown. So you could do either or. Um, I might do like an orangey brown on this one. So mix brown with a bit of yellow and red in. And just see what colour we get. A wee bit of white and just see what it looks like. So obviously a lot of it is brown already, so this, these sort of eyes stand out. And uh, I'm just gonna really carefully paint. Get this colour at the bottom. Oh. Put my arm straight in the paint. <laughs> so this is what happens unplanned. I'm surprised I haven't fell over anything in my live classes yet. <laughs> yeah, see that's me. That's me. Completely filthy already. So I think I'd prefer the green because you can't really see the brown. So, so the green. You're going to have yellow and blue. So if I can find a bit of space on my palette. Tiny bit of blue because you can see how dark that is. You're not going to need a lot. So you get this kind of brown, uh, greeny colour. And then you're going to add a bit of white. Just to brighten it up a little bit. This sort of green. See how Maybe a touch more white. It's just a very subtle bit of colour really, just underneath here. And you want to leave a little bit of black underneath the eye there. I'll bring it a bit closer. You can see. You can see how I'm kind of leaving a bit of black, almost like a bit of like an eyelid. But you can paint that back in afterwards. If you if you kind of paint that in. And then once you do the, the sort of white highlight on it, it just kind of softens it a little bit. So that's the kind of green on there. Not very, very subtle. Um, and then do a bit of white. So we'll just get that white on the nose and the white in the on the eyes. So the white is just going to go just kind of in this V bit in here. So the top there. And then the white. It's just like a couple of little flecks of white. Just kind of on the edges of the eyes there. So don't try and think too much about the pattern on there, but just a couple of little flecks. And then we're going to do the dark brown. We're going to get the, I think we'll do it with the dark brown, like the um, whiskers on there. Dark brown. 
Um, so a few dots. This is where you want nice, slightly runny paint. Not running off your brush runny, but just so you can get these kind of whiskers in. So. I'm just going to put in hairs. There. A few whiskers. You can see. And then that's pretty much the hair done. Um, and then the last bit is going to be um, the greenery there. So I think I'm just going to take this back slightly. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so the green, um, we're going to do two different greens, so we're going to do like a darker green and a lighter green, um, like a medium sort of type brush, uh, so yeah, blue and yellow together. So you get like a dark, dark sort of green. But we are going to add a little bit of white into it now. Just to be honest, it's, you know, really, really dark. So a bit of blue and yellow. And then just a bit of white in there just to kind of lighten it up a little bit. We do want it dark, but we want it to look a bit green still. So, okay, so. Okay, so that green, you're going to use your flat brush or a flattish brush, and you're going to use it kind of that way to kind of go up to get the kind of um, grass. So you're going to kind of put it up from the bottom of the canvas. So and a bit of a kind of um, some thicker, some thinner, but all, all the while coming up from the bottom of the um, canvas. Some a bit. So that's where the pressure comes in now. So obviously soft pressure, a lot harder pressure, and you get sort of a different thickness of grass. So we're gonna get some there, like this. And then we're gonna do, this is a darker one, then we're gonna do like a lighter one as well. So got some little ones. So it goes up quite high on there. So kind of look at your brush, make sure it's not too much paint up in it. And you want to see it, see how thin that is. That's how you want it. You kind of push it flat down, front and back. And these little ones at the front here, that's say all the way to the bottom. And some of these can go a bit higher. With that and then we're going to lighten up. We end up being quite thick at the bottom there, so you can be quite heavy, heavy with it. So more heavier at the bottom of the grass, so it looks heavier. The bottom. And then we're going to do exactly the same, but with a lighter. But definitely a bit of water in there will help. Help get the sort of um, nice lines in there. 
Okay, so then you're gonna lighten it up again. So you're gonna lighten it up with some white, which will make it go quite a pale green. But then to make it a bit more yellow, so a bit more green again, you're gonna put yellow in it. So white is good for lightening things, but it does make it pale. So you might have to add sort of colors back in again. So lighten it with some white and then get um, some yellow back in there. So you get a nice sort of bright green color. And just again, a bit of water will just help it kind of flow. So you want a good difference in color. That's how you get the depth. So you start putting it on and it's not much different then just add a bit more white in there to line a bit more and then a bit more yellow back in there again. So just because you want a good difference in color because otherwise you just don't, you, you, this is how you get the depth. Okay, so that's good. So again, you do exactly the same. Keep the brush nice and flat. And you can see that sort of depth coming through in the two different greens. They can cross over each other, you know, the grass and have to be completely straight. A bit more natural, I think, if it's not completely straight. But, uh, that's kind of about what I'm going to do, I think. Maybe some a bit more over here. A bit higher, kind of on the left and the right side, than kind of in the middle. So you don't want to come over your face. And then lastly, it's the, the purple flowers, which are really easy. You're just almost kind of printing with it. With your brush. So I'm going to try and get a bit more room on my palette to show you. Um, so I'll fold that over. So purple, bright purple, I'm using. Um, it's quite dark, and then you're just going to add a little bit of white into it just to make it a bit lighter. Um, I'm almost going to sort of print with the brush. So if you're mixing purple, you just want red and blue. I'll just quickly show you. It's not going to be bright purple, but red and blue together. So it's going to be quite dark until you add some white. So once you get a bit of white in there, you can start to see the sort of purple come through. Obviously, more ready purple you want it to be, more red in it, the more bluey purple, more blue in it. But you'll definitely need some white in it. But again, as you lighten it with the white, you can add the colour back in again to make it a bit brighter. Because that white will make it um, pale. So, using the sort of my brush, I'm literally just going to almost print with it. Sort of the edge of it, really. Um, so the, the lighter you press, the kind of thin, smaller they are, the heavier, the um, thicker they'll be. So it's just kind of... Come to it as random as possible, really. I find working quite quickly gets you a bit more kind of random. That's it, and then uh, a few more down here. So after that purple, we're going to lighten it up. So even using almost white, so really, really lighten that colour up, quite pale. And then again, just print almost on the same, some of the same ones. So you get that different colour in there. 
different sort of side of it. So again, it's kind of up to you when to kind of stop adding really. Um, another thing which is quite good for adding that sort of very little kind of, you know, like a some like a wild flower sort of field, using like a toothbrush or you can use your brush, but very wet and you just kind of flick it on the end and you get this sort of spray on there. That's quite a nice effect for, for like flowers and that. Um, yeah, kind of up to you when to kind of stop really. Depends how flowery you want your field to be. Um, but that is pretty much the last step. So obviously, because you're at home, you can carry on working away. Um, and just kind of messing with it really but I think at some point you have to kind of take a step back and just kind of stop <laughs> because I say it's easy to keep going and going with it so it's up to you to kind of decide but always take a few steps back um you're never never going to look at a painting this close up ever so when it's on a wall you see it from a you know a few feet away um so look at it from a distance um and you and you know you'll see what it's going to look like if you if you put it on the wall or whatever um, or even go back to it the next day, like I say, a day in between sometimes for me when I'm painting myself um, gives you a sort of good idea of um, if you want to sort of change anything on there. Um, but the very last step is to sign your masterpiece. So right hand corner is traditional. Um, obviously you can do whatever colour you want, black, um, you know, any colour we've used really, your call. Cool. Um, but just your initials. I'm going to put RH in the corner there. Um, if you did want to um, varnish it, because they do slightly fade over time. If you if you um, if you don't, like a spray gloss varnish is quite easy to use. That will last you a good few paintings if you do end up doing a few more. Um, this is the one I've got over here. This is quite a good one. <laughs> Like I say they're quite good. Wind and Newton one there, that's about thirteen pounds. But um, yeah, it does give it a nice sheen on there. If you are really proud of it and you want to put it up on your wall, which I hope you are. Um, but yeah, um, to go, if you just go to my um, website, I've got a Facebook page as well. So the website is paintingpassions.co.uk, um, and where you can buy any sort of tutorials that I've done from my live classes or you can actually join onto a live class um, either or but I think I've done about four now on there but yeah as I'm kind of doing them I'm kind of putting posting them straight on there so you can do them anytime um, and my Facebook page is Painting Passion so join it have a look I've got some of my own artwork on there as well which is very different to this um, I could actually show you one here that I've got I've done so it's a very different technique. It's more about kind of ink, um, splashy ink. Um, and I've got a bit of gold leaf in there. So this is ready for some resin, um, just to kind of promote myself. <laughs> uh, this is um, Abbey Gardens in Berry St. Evans. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of paintings that I do normally. So it is very, very different to this. Um, but I like very loose, very, very expressive kind of artwork. So, which I try and do in, in a lot of my paintings as well. Um, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the class and um, like my page and hopefully I'll see you on another class soon. Take care. Bye bye.